Um, I'm um, Tim Burrows from Umbrella. I've been in Australia myself about eight years now. Before that, I spent a, about a year and a half in Dubai, where I very much felt like a like a stranger in a strange land. So, uh, so I ha have some sympathy of. Uh, I can remember just how pleased I was when I sort of found an English language radio station on the uh, on the car as I was driving through the desert. Okay, let's let us let us get to the the, the nitty gritty of it. And th this might seem a bit of an obvious question, but let's, let's work out the rationale. And Steve, I'm going to come to you first on this one. Um, there is plenty of research around that says the major networks do actually meet, meet, reach most of the Australian population, even if English isn't their first language. So why bother to go beyond that? Well, because the very thing that most every speaker has said today, that you know, if you're not communicating in their language, you might not be communicating with them at all. You can, you can get out of research a, a people count, but it doesn't mean that any of your messages are getting through. And you know, with 20% of the population from non-English speaking background, where another language is spoken at home, you know, it's a fifth of the population. And uh, people on my side that get briefs from clients, I rarely get a brief that says, 20% of the population, their native language isn't English, what are we gonna do about it? I just get a brief that says, this is the target audience, Go talk to them. Yep. It's not even a consideration. Ralph, you, this must be a conversation you're, you're a part of from time to time. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that uh, you, know, you can say the right things and reach people, and they'll hear it. But you're only going to move them if you say it in a way that's going to make them feel something. Yeah. And they're not going to feel something uh, 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 unless the, it resonates and it's relevant. So to, to get something in their language uh, is, is, is making your message more pertinent, more relevant, and, and more meaningful to them. Um, so it's, it's a matter of, you know, you said that mass media will reach them, but we're talking about moving them. Now, Pino, you've been nodding at that. Do you want to build on that point? Oh, I think it's spot on. I used to joke many years ago that the most popular TV program for ethnic communities was Sale of the Century. <laughs> and it had all the audience reach you'd ever want, but it was never going to actually sell you a message. And so I think the reality is, is that we are complex beings in our media consumption and it's the same in ethnic groups. We would all access different media for entertainment or finance or um, hard news, soft news, whatever. And so I think the same goes with the, the ethnic com communities. If you want to move people on an issue of, of aged care or disability, you have to be able to speak to those communities in a way that makes sense. Now, Wazer, you've, you've sort of touched already today on the fact that um you know, I guess you've, you've had a foot in two cultures. Yeah. What is the best language to talk to you and your peers in? Both. <laughs> um, and it depends on what you're saying as well. Um, so in terms of, you know, because of my Chinese culture, um, there are aspects of it that works well in, in Chinese language, like, you know, festivals and things like that. So if you're communicating, on things like, um, you know, this Chinese New Year Festival and, you know, we're doing this campaign on it, then it's probably better in, a, in a Chinese language. But if you are, for example, you know, if I'm reading news, then obviously I'll be using English. Um, and, and one thing that I find quite interesting also is that, because um, I've been doing a lot of um, work around fusion, you know, fusion cultures, fusion artwork, um, and you can't develop that unless you have a foot in two cultures or, or more. Um, and yeah, so it depends. Ross. Well, I was thinking, how would I answer that? Um, with the media Which is programs, lucky, really. Yes, <laughs> and it didn't, take, it didn't take me long to come <laughs> up with this one. Um, it's all Greek to me. With the many, with the many <laughs> programs that we have, what, what is quite evident to us is that our community are, uh, don't have the service delivery that they, they need to understand what is going on. And what I mean by that is we've got social we welfare program and we've got 12 lines and those lines from, the, from 9 o'clock till 10.30 just don't stop. We bring in people, social workers, and they talk about issues such as uh, pension, uh, what are they entitled? If they have one home and they've got a holiday house somewhere else, how much money can they have in the bank? Or how much, uh, um, or will they lose their pension? Or if they have money, can they give their children 
a gift, and if they do, do they lose pension? You know how many people have lost thousands of dollars because they haven't understood the system? And this is where we come in and we bring in special pe you know, specialists in this area who speak the Greek language, and it's amazing. They all just tune in and then they talk, oh my God, I made a mistake, I shouldn't have done that, I was entitled, but nobody told me. So th this is a very important aspect of what we do is that we reach the communities, especially human services, be it um, problem gambling. You know, uh, I remember mum saying, oh geez, they've got some new machines. No mum, they're telling people not to work, you know, to lose their houses. You know, and all they see is people playing, <laughs> playing, oh she won a lot of money. No mum, they're saying don't play, you know, or control it, don't lose your house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Those are the messages. Yeah. Um, that's, that, that's a good point. It's probably something that's worth exploring a bit more. There's the, and actually, if I, this is a good one to put to you, I think, Ralph. Um, this idea of th th there's something around trust where it's a person's own language when you're kind of communicating with something as intimate as radio. Do you, do you think that's, that's an important point to consider? Well, certainly on radio. I mean, <clears throat> radio is a very intimate medium. Uh, and it's the closest medium to word of mouth. And the most trusted form of communication or recommendation is one that is from your peers. And, uh, if, if, and a lot of people consider the people on their radio, the people they wake up with, um, drive to, to work with, clean their teeth with, and, and that they are their friends and their companions. So to have a message on that station is an endorsement. Um, and I'll therefore trust the message. There's a halo effect on the advertisers that are on those stations because of that trust. Um, so uh, absolutely, and, and, but the advertising has to be sympathetic to that. There's no, no point slapping the ad that's you know, literally just translated. You have to be sympathetic to the, to the, the culture, the medium, the mood, uh, and the more relevant that message is and the more, the more sympathetic it is to the environment, the more it'll, it'll work and engage. Just before I move on from that point, Mao, I don't think I've brought you in on this question yet. Yeah, look, uh, I think this actually ties as well into your, your first question, which is uh, there, are, there is so much media. Uh, if you've got people watching, you know, Channel 7, 9 or 10, the mainstream media, why would you then go and advertise in, on an Italian radio station? Well, the answer is because of trust. When people, uh, people watch uh, ethnic media or multicultural media for different reasons than they do when they watched, uh, you know, Deal or No Deal or, or Home and Away or whatever they, they watch, uh, those shows they watch uh, for entertainment uh, or to zone out or they've got it on in the background. Or, uh, as opposed to when people tune into multicultural media, they do it with all their attention, with all their ears, because it is such a limited resource. And they're absolutely there to take in every bit of information and they trust it, uh, you know, which is funny. Because, you know, but they absolutely trust it. So when an advertisement comes up, and an advertisement that isn't just, oh, we've, we've taken the English script and we've translated because they can tell mm. that. But when they've seen actually there's a bit of effort gone into it, they're saying, this is someone that's actually trying to reach me on a medium that I trust. Uh, so it's a very effective way of, of reaching out to people.